Okay, let's talk about the CASA assessment. And the CASA test or assessment is for the state of Indiana. If you're going to be a teacher, you're probably very familiar with this. And of course, if you're watching this video, assume that you're preparing for the CASA. But it stands for the Core Academic Skills Assessment. Um, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a math practice problem that you're definitely going to want to be able to handle if you're going to be uh, you know, expecting to do well on the CASA math section. Now a little bit about myself. My name is John. I am a teacher, middle and high school math teacher, even top beyond that. So I definitely know what it's like to take certification exams. And the one thing I could tell you, which you probably already know uh, as a professional already, you know, someone probably with already a college degree, is that it's better to overstudy than understudy, uh, especially for these uh, particular teaching assessments or certification tests that you're going to have to do. Um, so it's not uncommon for um, you know candidates or teachers to to have to retake tests more than once. Rather not do that, of course. The key is to really be uh, ready for it. So for the CASA assessment, there's a decent amount of math that you're going to want to be ready for. I would kind of classify that as kind of like a high school level mathematics. Um, so this math practice problem we're going to take a look at is really a real kind of basic general algebra type of problem. So something that you should be able to definitely uh, handle and very well could see on the CASA. Now before we go for, uh, forward here, I want to let you know that I actually do have a CASA math uh, prep course. I'm going to leave the link to that course in the description of this video. If you think that you uh, like my teaching style and you want to check out my full course on the uh, cost of math. But that being said, let's take a look at this uh, practice problem here. So let me explain the problem, then I'm going to give you a chance to solve it, and of course, I'm going to go over it. So here we have a basic xy coordinate plane. I have two points here. Okay, I'm not going to. I'm going to I'm not going to give you too many clues yet. Okay, I'll give you a. <laughs> I'm going to give you a chance to solve this on your own. But here we have two points on the xy coordinate plane. I'd like you to find the slope. Okay, the slope of a line that passes through these two points. Okay, so let's just imagine there is a line here. Let me just kind of sketch it. It's going to pass through these two points. I'd like you to find the slope of that line. Now. This, of course, is going to involve some formulas, some knowledge, etc. I'm not going to tell you that yet because um, hopefully some of you kind of remember this, you know, through your rote memory. But you might want to go ahead and give the video a pause, and then we'll, we'll, you know, I'll kind of walk you through this problem. Okay, so I don't know if you, you know, probably thought to yourself, yeah, I can solve this. I just don't remember the formula. So let me give you a, a clue, okay? So the formula for the slope is m equals well I'll do I'm going to give you two forms of the formula the slope okay we um, generally will use the small m variable to describe the slope in algebra but it's the change in the rise over the change in the run okay so another way of seeing that probably uh, a little bit more specifically or common way to see that the change in the rise is the differences of the y coordinates so we can say this is y minus y2. A lot of different ways to say this over x1 minus x2. All right, so this should be kind of a little bit of a clue there. Hopefully that means something to you. So at this point, if you want to go ahead and give the video uh, or give this um, problem a try, you're going to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do it. And then I'm going to obviously go through this problem. Okay, so now, I mean, I'm trying to give you a couple little clues if you were kind of lost because a lot of you out there are like yes I remember doing this back in high school or I remember doing this in college but I forgot forgot the formula okay so listen I gave you the formula we talked a little bit about it so now it's more like an application of it right so I will say this much I know I'm kind of giving you some extra commentary here but even if you were strong in math are strong in math or even if you're going to be a math teacher you still need to review mathematics uh, and everything else for the uh, CASA test okay so don't just go based upon your memory like oh yeah I did great uh, you know math but you took maybe your last math class was was a year ago maybe two years ago that's not enough you have to review this stuff and the only way to really review is a lot of practice problems okay? and, and covering a lot of different areas in mathematics but with that being said let's get right to this problem okay so we have two coordinates here and effectively the the slope formula says 
more or less, we're going to go and subtract the y coordinates. So these are the y coordinates here, okay, of these two different points. And then we're going to go ahead and put uh, subtract the x coordinates. So here's the x coordinates here. Now, I'm kind of giving you a real quick crash course on, on this. There's some more that we really want to kind of emphasize uh, about this topic, actually quite a bit more, but this will be enough to certainly answer this uh, question. Okay, so the slope of this line is going to be the differences of the y's, so we have 2 and negative 4. Now here is the, the big, big key where a lot of students kind of mess up here. I like to underline one point. I'm going to say this point here, okay, 5, 2. Now I'm going to tell you the reason why I'm going to do that. Whatever point I start here, this y, okay, so I'm going to use this y value here. Let's put that 2, and I'm going to subtract the other y value, and that is negative 4. So it's going to be 2 minus, now we've got to be very careful here. I actually put in these negative numbers to kind of throw you off because this, I, want to, I want you to avoid these common mistakes. So that's going to be 2 minus a minus 4, or a negative 4, just like this, okay? So it's not the math that, that gets a lot of students in trouble, it's the setup, okay? So 2 minus a minus 4. Now, again, remember I underlined this uh, value here uh, first. Now I could underline this one, but the reason why I did that is the following. I started with this 2, okay? That 2 came from this point's information. So now when I start with the x's, I have to start with this point's information, this 5, okay? I can't start with this negative 2. So this 2, okay, came from this coordinate, so I'm going to start with the 5 in terms of my x values, okay? Hopefully I explained that clear enough, okay? So if I chose 2 as my y here, I can't choose this negative 2 here. I have to be consistent with the point. So, it's, so 2 and 5 come from the same coordinate. Okay, so now it's going to be 5. I'm going to subtract the x's. 5 minus a minus 2, just like this. And now let's go ahead and just kind of review what we have here. Okay, so this part is the differences of the y's. Okay, that's these guys here. All right, so it's 2 minus a minus 4. Okay, that's the change in the rise, okay? This is the, by definition the slope of a line or this part of the formula. And now I have my x's, which is five and negative two, so five and minus two. So everything looks good. So now what we have to do is just go ahead and just do the math. Let me go to write it here so we can kind of see what's going on. So two minus a minus four is going to be two plus four. Now, if you didn't know that, that's a whole nother separate conversation about positive negative numbers, negative numbers, real numbers, how to work with those things. But if you were struggling a bit with this, then yeah, that's probably a pretty good indication that, you know, you definitely got a good amount of review to do to get ready for the cost. So this is going to be two, this two minus minus four is two plus four and five minus minus two is going to be five plus two. And when we pull this together, we're going to get six over seven. Okay, so that is the slope. So the slope of the line that passes through these two points here is 6 over 7. And I can go into a whole other uh, discussion on positive slope, negative slope, and, and you know more about the definition of the slope. But this is very, very, very important. Um, we're talking about um, like basic core algebra skills. So remember in algebra we have these lines y equals mx plus b. It's kind of a general form of the line. The m is the slope, but you but you need to know how to calculate the slope. You need to know what it what it what it is, um, you know, conceptually, and then also how to graph these lines and how to find the equation lines. And again, this is just a segment of a lot of additional other math things that you know you're going to need to know for the CASA. But um, the point of this video is not to um, scare you, but basically to really you know, um, you know, scare you in terms of like, oh, that's a lot of math. Yeah, it's a good amount of math that you need to need to know. Remember, you know, the whole idea is core academic skills, all right? And, you know, mathematics is a, a key part of the CASA test. All right, so let's go and wrap this video up. Um, again, if you think you like my teaching style, I'm going to leave a link to my full CASA test prep course. Uh, math uh, prep course in the link uh, in this uh, description of this video. Also, um, hopefully you consider subscribing to my channel. I've been on YouTube for well over 10 years. Um, 
and uh, you know fortunately I've worked really hard at it gotten uh, millions of views and you know put a lot of content out there hundreds and hundreds of videos a lot of these videos will definitely help you for the cost so if you check out my playlist and whatnot that's definitely going to help you out hey if you enjoyed the video definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback any feedback is interesting um, you know uh, how long uh, have you been thinking about teaching is this something that you kind of always wanted to do or are you going to be going for middle school high school what, what subject are you taking the CASA more than once what do you think about you know this particular exams if you have any particular questions I'll certainly try to make um, future videos there but any feedback is good feedback but with that being said listen from one teacher to another teaching is such a critical uh, profession and it's challenging okay only you know I kind of hate to say this but I'll say this anyways it's something that I personally believe that and it's just kind of common sense only really fellow other fellow educators understand what it's like to be a teacher a lot of people can say oh yeah you know teaching is going in with a bunch of kids in a classroom unless you've actually taught you just don't understand how challenging it is and how rewarding it is and it is a challenging career for sure okay that's why you have to really work on you know get, getting your certifications passing these exams etc but that's kind of the nature of education so with that thought I definitely want to wish you all the best in your career. Thank you for your time and have a great day.